Okay, welcome back, everyone, to the Cube coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube. Got the whole team here. Dave Vellante is in the analyst session. It's day zero as we start getting ready for the big day one tomorrow, Tuesday. The big news, of course, a lot of announcements, a lot of talk about generative AI, but also the 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 stack is evolving to provide great value to developers. We've been covering that on Silicon Angle, of course, on the Cube. Alan Charbers here, the EVP of Partners at MongoDB a company. We've been covering deeply as well, and and is a, a uh, a love for, by developers. So when I think of developers in MongoDB, you guys go hand in hand. Everyone kind of knows who you guys do. Great to have you back on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks, John. It's a, and by the way, it's a pleasure to be here at AWS. Uh, this is, I can't even count how many <laughs> events I've been to. Um, this one's probably the most special to me because our partnership's never been better. Yeah, I mean, it's fun to watch, especially Amazon coming back uh, from the, from the I would say, negative press. People are, oh, they're, they're behind on AI, which, you know, they really weren't, they just now, but they've been so focused for the past, I think, year and a half, you've seen what they've done. But as AI starts to emerge, you start to see this formation, the fog's lifting. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's going to be developers. And yes. that Garmin told me on my exclusive preview, they're going to get back to the basics. What that means is build value with developers. And there's developers inside companies, there's startup developers, they got to run on a database, now you got inference. So, like, I think the world is spinning to this MongoDB value proposition that you guys have been on for multiple years, which is, hey, how do I make the life of the developer easier? Yes. And more productive and scalable? Yes. Which is, I mean, I'm oversimplifying, but that's pretty much what you guys have, have been saying, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I give the hyperscalers a lot of credit. They're giving uh, developers a platform to get access to tools, whether for AI or for specialty applications. The hyperscale has always been there for developers. And when MongoDB started, we started the company from developers. Our founders built their own modern database because they wanted to make it easier to use data, whether it was for metadata use cases, operational, and today vector data use cases. So we have hundreds of thousands of applications using MongoDB around the world, 50,000 paying customers. Yeah. But the hyperscalers, I think, have done a great job creating an accelerator for customers, developers, to get access to products like MongoDB and for MongoDB to be able to give them tools with great yeah. experience. So it's and, a great time to be together. And they got to think about serving you as a partner because you guys are a big partner of AWS. We are. I mean, it's been it's well documented. I don't need to go into it. But I want to bring up something in my article with, with Matt Garman and get your reaction. Um, he said, I want to get back to the basics. Um, you know, Gen AI is getting all the headlines, but he emphasized they're committed to the foundational services, compute storage, and databases is what he said. And then um, then he said, um, the theme emerging is the critical role of uh, applications. Inference, um, generate predictions is gonna be integral for all applications. And he sees inference as foundational of a component for AWS search on par with compute storage and database. It's the next building block, core building block, Garmin stated unequivocally. What does he mean by, because he's kind of saying, Databases aren't going away. Yeah. But, you know, he's asserting that inference service, uh, yes. inference building block is doing the kind of, it's not a database, but it's like, it's smart. Yeah, <laughs> it's think, like, think like it, I, I like to simplify this. Think of it as developers over the years have written applications, applications for e-commerce. Um, I mean, it was, it's Black, you know, the Black Friday was uh, last Friday and it's Cyber Monday today. There's so many e-commerce applications written. You always need a database for real time for e-commerce applications. But in the last couple of years, what you've seen is in the world of AI, people have focused on training models and experimenting how to train models with using their own data and public data. And there's been risk. People are scared of what to do, the legal ramifications, but there's been this whole influx of training models. Um, and then you see the uptick of people using chips like NVIDIA to make that process faster. But you still have this whole plethora of applications that have been written and are being written by developers, like I mentioned, the e-commerce application. How do you combine those two worlds together? To me, that's where a company like Mongo and Inference plays together. Mongo has a database that has a vector component. It can easily tie into the most popular LMs today. So if you want to bring in agentic workflows or RAG uh, workflows into your applications, either new or previously built, that's the building block I believe Matt's talking about, connecting this world of training all these models for the last year to the application suite 
which is how companies make money. They make yeah. money on writing applications and selling things to consumers. I think you got it right. And it's, uh, here's this quote that and we'll see how it plays out tomorrow. But his quote is, the entire way you build generative AI applications is going to change and be reinvented. So he's saying the entire way you build generative AI applications today is going to change and be reinvented. Inference is the next core building block, period. If you think about inference as part of every application, it becomes integral just like databases. Yes, 100%. He's not saying database is going away. No. I mean, saying... the, the database is the glue between the two worlds. But I would give you, there's a third vector that we don't always talk about. How do you use AI to write applications faster and more efficiently while you use AI to make them smarter? So Amazon has done a great job with Q. Uh, and yeah. uh, Microsoft has Copilot. And Google has their own code assist. So MongoDB has been training these models so that when you're writing applications, you can write them faster and easier using the co-pilots from these hyperscalers. And then once you do that, you're able to plug the two worlds in, uh, together that I mentioned using a vector database and other products. And that's the glue. Yes, 100%. Yeah, and again, I wanted to point to that quote because it's important in saying it's as integral as database. Now, that's important. I mean, the, the magnitude of that statement is, well, has that's implications. Why, that, that's why you see investors and the world saying, where's the true ROI of AI? Okay, obviously... NVIDIA has done great in the markets, and the hyperscalers have done great in the markets. But if you ask most CIOs of large enterprise today, they'll say, we have hundreds of experiments going on with AI. But are there mission-critical apps being run today with high ROI? Many would say it's too early. And that's why I believe you are hearing people looking for the answer that Matt just mentioned that the inference layer is what's gonna connect these worlds to give customers the confidence to take applications to production and use the models they've been training. Now, I, when is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen in the next month, the next year? But it has to happen for the ROI to be delivered to investors and our, most importantly, our customers. Yeah. What's the news you guys have here at reInvent? What's the big deal? Well, I mean, I mean for AWS has been our best partner yeah. um, for many years. It didn't start that way, as you know. You and I have spoken before. Yeah, yeah. I would say we've gone from competitor to competition to now truly a first you class. You guys are like the highest sponsor level, I think. Oh, uh, you guys are the, yeah. with the diamond. What's the highest yeah. level? We're Emerald Sponsor. Emerald Sponsor. Yeah. Um, we <laughs> win awards now. Uh, I can't even count them. Uh, Ryan and I were talking earlier. I can't even memorize it yeah. for the interview. Um, we are part of their Blueprint Competency Program, yeah. uh, Gen AI Competency, um, Modernization Competency using Gen AI automotive, financial companies, these are all blueprints for AWS and Mongo help customers together. But the biggest news is, back to like, how do you get an ROI from AI, the inference layer and combining those yeah. worlds. Customers need blueprints, best practices on how to take an experiment and make it run in production where their end customers are gonna get value from it. So earlier this summer, we came out with a program called MAP, MongoDB AI Applications Program. And that's literally what it is. It takes partners, yeah. some competitors, some uh, more complementary, brings them together to give customers a blueprint. So you need a blueprint for how to connect MongoDB via LangChain to Bedrock, running on AWS with uh, a data warehouse layer of Redshift. We give you a blueprint to do that. And it took a long time to bring all these players together because we have, all of us have our own agendas the beauty of MongoDB, we're kind of like the Switzerland here where we fit in each of these stacks. Remember our DNA, we used to be the uh, in the mean and merge stack, it was M was Mongo. So we're at the Switzerland across all these yeah. different companies. You guys just had great developer penetration. We bring them together. Yeah, well, you guys, but that's our big announcement today. That is that we're expanding on that program. Yeah, and, but also what you guys have done is you've maintained the roots of the developer yes. while building a system yes. that does more. 100%. Again, and I think that's where... Our, I'm looking for this AI inference layer to be like, okay, it, databases and all the systems around data yes. are changing. I, they have to. I'll give you an example of a blueprint. So, um, and I didn't actually know this. I didn't know that training language models on audio, all right, pictures, video, you could do it, but audio, sound files, it was fairly difficult. I don't think it had been done before uh, about a year ago. We've now given customers through our program with our partners, AWS, Azure, Google, the ability to do that and then use that training of sound models to an online application using a RAG architecture. That didn't exist a year ago. 
So the more of these blueprints, these recipes we can give to customers, the faster they get application to production. Why is that good for Mongo? Obviously, a production application is going to consume more yeah. than a, a, a pilot. So today, we expanded on our program, which already included AWS, Azure, Google, um, and included Anthropic and Cohere and couple smaller language models like RC. Today, we added uh, Capgemini, McKinsey, and IBM to the program, and Confluent. So we added four more partners, and they're all bringing their own flavor to these recipes so customers can get AI applications to production faster. Great. And what's your goal for the show at AWS this year? Reinvent um, our 12th year doing the queue. We've seen the evolution. What's your plans? What's your, what do you hope to accomplish uh, this um, week? I <laughs> Besides hope... stay awake and well, get through everything. Well, when I get on the red eye on Wednesday, I'll t hopefully I don't stay awake. But yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, look, uh, one thing about AWS is this show is a show where you don't just talk about business. You connect with friends. Uh, I've made so many friends... Uh, over the years in, at MongoDB, I've been there 10 years at other companies. The one show I know, except if you're Microsoft or Google, you're going to be here. So I really hope to connect with a lot of friends from the past, talk about these AI challenges, and then go solve them. Because if we, as companies like Mongo and other data players, can't help yeah. uh, customers solve them, no one's going to. Al, great. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate Thank it. you. Good to see you. Good news there. I mean, Mongo making things happen as we've been covering. Again, it's a developer scenario where the value will then continue to be created. Again, just another step function value opportunity for developers. Of course, the cubes, they're covering it. We'll be right back. More from Las Vegas after this short break.